Today on Don't Panic Pantry, we are doing a pesto life hack. We are showing you how versatile pesto can be, not only in the way that you make it, but in the way that you eat it. We're putting it all over our bodies. We're gonna show you three ways to eat pesto. In a pasta, on a piece of crispy skinned salmon, and in a soup. Everybody uh, is used to like the Genovese pesto, uh, pine nuts, basil, parmigiano reggiano, and they get very specific about how you do it, and that's great. But pesto really just means uh, uh, like finely chopped up or finely beaten up pasty stuff. Oh, thank you, Sierra. You don't have to use nuts. You don't have to use basil. You can mix a lot of things together to make a tasty pesto. We're going to use greens, herbs, goat cheese, butter, olive oil, garlic. I like to throw a little lemon juice in there. First thing I'm gonna do is take two ice cubes. This is one of the big Sarah Minnick hacks is that uh, keeping it, your ingredients cold will help keep the pesto bright green and really appealing looking. So ice cubes on the bottom, then our cold butter. Got a quarter cup of butter, half a stick. Now we got a cup of olive oil, some goat cheese, then a little salt. Then I'm just gonna kind of roughly chop our greens and garlic. Ooh, peppery. Add these right in. And then just a little lemon squeezer. And now uh, we blend it. And look at that. A beautiful, bright green pesto. And the nice thing now is I'm not blending anything else into it. So if I want to add more salt, so I want to add more olive oil, I want to add anything like that, I can just kind of stir it in and flavor it. And it doesn't have that like muddy, dark green look of a lot of pesto. Woo! There's some peppery arugula. Obviously, uh, it's really important to taste your greens before you put them in. That is a very peppery arugula, but I'm gonna now kind of round that a little more, add a little more lemon juice, more salt, and now I'll fold in a little bit of Parmesan cheese as well. And this is all part of the deal here. We're just kind of making it tasty. And this also adds like a nice sharp element to it. Isn't that just a beautiful color, Ben? It's gorgeous. Ooh, yeah, all right, we're there. Super fast pesto. We've made pesto on the show. If you want to see how to make classic pesto, go right here. But we're just having a very pure, simple pesto. Mm. It's creamy and salty, but like, there's like this vegetal, like earthiness to it that's so lovely. Mm. Okay, let's cook some salmon. Crispy salmon, nice little pesto. We'll squeeze a little lemon juice on it just to make it nice. Perfect cook. Mmm, that is lovely. The butteriness of the salmon, the acid, the vegetal, all those things. It's just, this is just a great, it's a great meal. That's a very beautiful dish. Let's move on to part three. Bean edition. And now, the final installment, the stunning conclusion of our pesto series. Very often I just cook beans in salt. Sometimes I'll add some vegetables in toward the end. So this is literally just chickpeas. You could use any beans you want. These are little tiny chickpeas from Rancho Gordo. I added in some chopped up carrots, celery, and onions and just threw it in and let it just like kind of cook until just barely cooked through. And now this is a very mellow, light, simple little soup. And we're gonna make it into a delicious, rich, luscious, delicious broth. Look at this soup has become this like bright green, vibrant, beautiful soup. And now this broth that was just bean water and salt is now exploding with flavor. It's like luscious and rich and velvety. 
It has like all the cheese flavors into it. I had to buy some crazy vegetable stock that's actually made by a multinational third party corporation uh, in Europe that then makes a concentrate and sends it to a company in the US that you've heard of and then slaps it onto a box and adds water and sugar to it. This is way better. Mmm. That's just great. This pesto came together so fast. Little blend and blitz. It is just a, a secret weapon ingredient. This is here to remind you that pesto doesn't have to be the stuff you think it is. You don't have to buy it in a jar. You don't have to make it with expensive pine nuts. You can make pesto with any number of ingredients. Then you can use it to make a wide variety of things like pasta, a piece of fish, a vegetarian soup. And now, Ben, we can even freeze this pesto and defrost it in the future for a future meal. See you in the future. Mm -hmm.